I recently got back into playing Star Citizen and some of my friends took an interest into the game. After teaching them how to play the game, I realized the game doesn't teach you well enough on how to get into it. So I decided upon myself that I would make this video to share some light on how to play the game. With 3.15 coming around the corner and everyone's about to have their money wipe and start at square one, this video should get you started off your feet before and when it happens. Your journey into the universe will begin at the Star Citizen main website where you have to create an account here on the top right. Make sure you use my referral code in the description so you can get 5,000 extra AUC when you start out. That 5,000 doesn't seem much, but it gives you an extra money you need to rent a ship to get you into the big money making methods. After making an account, you need to make a pledge to a ship in the game. It's like buying the game, but a ship that you'll own forever. The lowest ship you can get is the Aurora and the Mustang. And if you want my opinion, I believe the Aurora is the ship you want to go if you want to stay cheap. However, if you decide you like the game, I recommend you get the Avenger Titan if you are a solo player. Or if you have somebody you're going to play with, like a friend for, or all of the time when you start the game, the Cutlass Black will do you both good. Any more money spent will be unnecessary unless you're willing to back and support the company. This game is not pay to win. Yes, you heard me right. It is not pay to win. Yes, of course, you will have a big advantage at the start having a better ship. But over time, everyone will have the same ship that you have because it can all be bought with the end game currency. Once you made a pledge, you want to click play now. You will see if you checked all the requirements to play the game. I highly recommend and I cannot stress this enough. Yet you must put this game on an SSD. I made a mistake in putting it on my 4 terabyte hard drive. And it was lagging and FPS dropped every second I was playing the game. Once I switched it to the SSD, it was running so smooth it's like I was playing Warzone match in Call of Duty. After you have the game start up and ready to go, uh, you want to select the Santuan station. And make sure you put the best region in your area. Mine is the US. I made the mistake of pressing EU. But then after that, you'll also be visited by a character customization. Usually your face is covered by a helmet so people don't really see your face, but if you remove the helmet, that's when the time you'll actually see your face, so I didn't really play much with it. After you get done with the character customization, you'll be selected to choose between four cities, the Lorval, the Area 18, the Orison, and New Babbage. There is no big advantage you will have when you select one of the four starting areas. The only difference is that Orison is a gas planet and you are living on a floating pillar. As such, that means you will have to climb to a 67 km altitude before you can quantum drive to other planets. As for others, it's only 9 km, so I highly recommend you pick the one that isn't Orison. For the sake of the video, I recommend picking Lorville. And yes, I know, I believe I am pronouncing it wrong. But hey, we all make mistakes. At the start, you'll wake up in bed. You can look around with the mouse. With the communication on your top left, press F12 to hide it. So you'll not get distracted as you learn the game. Pressing and holding the F key enters your inner mind. It is what you'll be using to interact with the world around you. If you need to leave or exit a position, all you need to do is press Y. For the sake of getting out of bed, we're just going to press the letter key Y and it will get us out of our bed. The controls are pretty simple. Use the W key to move forward, the S key to move back, the A key to move left, and the D key to move right. Once you get a feel for your character's motion, it's time to head for the door. Usually the door will open by itself, but you have to enter inner mind by pressing and holding the F key. Move your mouse to the corrected door opening panel and it'll open once you click. Once you get past the door, you can adventure to the world beyond. These are our lovely PCs that occupy the area that make it seem lively. Once you get your bearing around the world, come to this elevator on the top floor. 
Once you get your bearings, come to the elevator and activate your inner mind again to call the elevator. A nice key feature there is in this game is the third person. To do that, simply press the F4 key to activate third person. Press it two more times and you'll go back to first person. Once the elevator is here, you can see on the top what current floor you're on. If you scroll down, you'll find the ground floor. That's where we want to go. Once you hit the ground floor, you can explore all you like, but for the fake of the purpose, I'm going to try to speed this up as much as I can. You want to take a left and proceed forward. Right here is the fees and fine payment station. As of right now, I have no fees or fines because I am a good guy. Well, somewhat a good guy. I do some bounty hunting on the side. I know this world is very, very pretty, but it's going to be very jittery and laggy for you at the very start because it's your first time ever rendering in this world. But after your computer gets it down and rendered, it'll be a piece of cake and it'll look just like this. After you come out, just take a left and you'll be on your way to the spaceport. There is some arrows that lead you and guide you where you need to go and what side of the track you can be on for the correct way if you really want to be in that most immersive roleplay. Of course there are some security guards waiting around to make sure you're not doing anything bad and protecting the citizens. All you have to do is keep turning left and you'll eventually get to the space station. Of course, if you ever have trouble finding a way around in Lauraville, there is a lovely sight map right here, and it's all throughout the city. The signs are pretty self-explanatory. They'll help you and guide you along your way to wherever you need to go. We are trying to go to the spaceport, and it's this way. All you have to do is keep turning left and eventually you get to the train. As you can see, it'll tell you there's a train for the Premium Line, and then there's a train to the spaceport. You might need to wait a while for the train to appear. Maybe if you're lucky, the train will be here. Well, look at that. The train is here. As you can see on the top, it'll let you know what time the train will depart. Once the train takes you to your designated area, just leave the area and take a sharp right. If you ever have a hard time seeing something, you can hold down the F key and scroll in and out to zoom in. For this immersive play, I'm just going to go with the arrows. Usually I don't. <laughs> Of course, there are more trains connected to the spaceport, and that's the trading area, but we'll get to later into that into a different video, if you guys would like. But for the sake of the video, let's get on our spaceship and get out of here. You have to go through a security scan in order to get to the spaceport. To say if you're wanted or if you have any fines you need to pay. Of course, you don't have to stand there and scan, but you can if you want. You can just walk on through. And this is the spaceport. This is where you'd be spending most of your time during the game as you call and summon your vehicles. The consoles will be on your left. Interacting with these consoles, you can summon your vehicle and they'll tell you which hangar you need to go to. Just make sure you remember which hangar or which pad your vehicle's in. Back here is where you can buy the ungame ships. Like I said, this game is not pay to win and everyone can own the ship. As much as I would love to show you every ship that we have in the game, I believe it's best that you have to experience firsthand as you play the game yourself. But as for now, let's get out of here so I can teach you the controls and how to fly. I suggested the Aurora back then, and so we're just gonna start with the Aurora. 
I do have other three ships, but for the sake of the video, I'll start off with a ship that you're mostly going to buy in the start of the game, which would be the Aurora. Click the retrieve button next to your Aurora. After you give it some time, it'll tell you which hangar it'll be in. Just try not to forget it, because that's what you gonna need to go to if you wanted to get your ship. We are in Hangar 9. Oh, would you look at that? A player is also gonna go to this ship. Don't mind if I jump in this elevator with you. Maybe we should beat him up. Ah, I'm just kidding. I wonder what kind of ship he has. Ah, the Mercury Star Runner. Well, judging by the way he's moving around, I believe he paid for this or he either rented this ship. He looks like he's starting to enjoy his visit of his new ship. As for us, we'll go to our own ship. Goodbye, and I hope you enjoy Star Citizen. If you ever forget which hangar your ship is in, just look through the walls and you can see where your ship is located and what hangar it's at. As remember, it was hangar 9. Ah, the hangar. It is a spectacular view and it always amazes me every time I see it. To enter the ship, you have to use interactive mine, like last time. Mostly, everything that can happen in-game can be interacted with the interactive mind by pressing and holding F. There's your bed, if you want to lay down. And there's the cockpit. Let's get in it. You can use the interactive mind to start your power ships and make it flight ready. Or you can simply press the R key to start it up. We'll just press R for this shape. All right, the spaceship is ready to go and we're ready to fly, but the hangar is still closed. So we're gonna have to call the comms area. Pressing F11 will open up the comms. Go under the friends tab and activate landing services panel. You'll call the guy to open up the hangar. Pressing and holding the Z button will allow you to free look around without moving the ship. Now that the hangar is open, it is pretty easy to get out of here. All you have to do is press the spacebar button and it will lift you straight on up. Let's learn more about the interface inside. You have four main important interfaces, the gear, the ESP, the CPLD and the vertical takeoff and landing. Let's put in the gear. You can also enter third person by pressing F4 as well. Pressing the N key brings in your gear. By pressing and holding the F key, you can actually look around in your cockpit and turn off, turn on the power, open the exterior, or mess around with the tablets on your left and right side. Over here, you can press the menu button and change it to whatever systems you want to see on that tablet. All right, let's learn how to fly. In the center, you'll be moving your mouse. Just make sure you stay in the center if you don't want to turn your ship. As long as you're in the center, it won't be mo turning your ship at all. Moving your mouse outside of the crosshair will turn your ship. For example, if you, turn, if you move it out of your left, it turns left. If you move it to your right, it turns right. If you move it up, it'll go up. The more you push the mouse up, left, right, or down, the more it'll turn. Recentering your mouse into the center of the crosshair will stop it from turning.
Of course, you can use both sides of the corners to do vice versa. If you take a look on the left side of your panel, you'll see that there is a bell. It's basically telling you your speed on which your ship is going. The square is what's mostly important. Right here will show you the speed at which you're going. And this square represents your speed limiter. Your ship will not go past the square speed limiter. To strafe left, press the A key. To strafe right, press the D key. To move forward, press the W key. And to move back, press the S key. Not pressing any of the strafe keys will make your ship go back to zero and not move. To tilt your ship to the left, press the Q button. To tilt your ship to the right, press the E button. Now you know how to fly your ship. Alright, let's get out of here. On the right side you'll see your altitude level. We need to hit 9 in order to get, exit the atmosphere of Hurston. Right now we're at 2.294. If we were on Orison, we would have had to make that requirement of 64. But right now, since we spawned on Lorville, which we glad we did, we only need to reach 9. To simply tilt up and make sure you're aiming at space. Moving your mouse up and down repositions the limiter of which your ship will go. Being in the red is not bad, it's just that you'll lose control. Being in the blue is your combat, where you have more maneuverability and more control. For the sake of trying to get out of here as fast as we can, we're just going to put it all the way up as far as we can go. Alright, let's do it. Pressing and holding the W key will get move us forward. And as you can see in our little box, it also increased our speed. Pressing the shift will increase the speed to your set limiter at a faster rate. Of course, don't freak out if you lose a, you lose a lot of boost. It'll recharge over time. The only thing is, you can't use the boost again unless it reaches 25%. If you ever get tired of pressing and holding the W key, press the C button to activate cruise control. This will make your ship go to your speed limiter at all times. The only way to make it stop moving is by pre-pressing the C button again. This icon next to the square will let you know that you are going at a cruise. Now that we reach our altitude, we'll turn off cruise and we'll let go of movement. As you can see, our speed is going down. Ah, space. What a lovely view. Every time I see it, it brings joys to the eyes. In space, Norton's law is applied here. Objects in motion stay in motion unless applied by an opposite force. Thanks to the CPLD, it is also counteracting that law automatically. If it was turned off, we will have to learn how to apply the opposite force to put us to a halt. Thanks for the CPD being CPLD being on, we can just let go of the movement and it will honestly bring us back down to zero. 
When moving in space, there's a certain icon you gotta pay attention to at all times. It's this icon right here. This represents where your ship is moving to. So if it's right there, that means your ship is moving in that direction, but you can tilt and turn looking in the opposite direction. But you're still moving in that direction. <laughs> it's a helpful thing to keep note so you won't crash into stuff. It can be anywhere on your HUD. Just keep in mind that wherever that thing is, that's where your ship is moving to. You can look anywhere all you want, but that icon is the most important icon of them all. All right, let's look at the map. To open the map, press F2. As you can see, we are on Hurston. That's our spawning area. This is where Lorival is. If you want to go to New Babbage, it'll be Microtech, which would be up here. And then if you want to go to Area 18, is it Art Corp down here? Well, Houston is the first star or first planet from the star. Orison is on the second planet from the star. Pressing this icon up here will bring you zoomed in to your general location. Usually it's surrounded by a certain amount of planets. Each planet you see is landable. You can land and walk on foot. The only thing you can't land on and walk on foot would be Orison, because it's a gas planet. <laughs> but it is surrounded by planets as well. All right, let's go to the space station. Zoom in on Hurston and you'll be able to find and orbit the, the planet to find a space station. The space station we're going to is Everest Harbor. Just simply click and set route. Knowing that you set your route, it'll be on your top left. Press F2 again and you'll be out. To activate your quantum drive, simply press the B button. Keep in mind that your spooting needs to charge up before you quantum. Think of it as charging your bat charging your engines before you lift off. The calibration also has to reach 100% in order to go. So let's calibrate to the space station. Once you're calibrated, press and hold B. To deactivate quantum drive, press B again. Now, we're going to try to land on the space station. Just make sure you're not looking at it. Just make sure you're not moving towards it so you won't collide. Remember that icon that I said is the most important? Yeah. Make sure it's facing away from the space hub so you won't collide into it. Full throttles all the way up. And if you go super fast, you can always speed back down by pressing and holding the X button. Which will be your space brakes. Pressing X and holding shift will increase your space brakes. It's another key button that you might want to keep track of. So it looks like we're not facing the right side. So we'll just press the Q button and tilt ourselves. Like all stations, you can call the comp button and request landing. If you don't do it, you'll get impounded in the fee for it. After you request landing, try to look for this icon over here. It represents the place where you need to land. If you're moving too fast, scroll down your speed limiter and it won't go faster. Sometimes I set my speed limiter to allow 15 to 10% and pressing and holding W 
is a nice touch to go on in inland. Don't forget your gears by pressing the end button. Press control to go down. Congratulations! You now know how to fly your ship and land on a spaceport. I hope this video will help you get off your feet and start flying around the universe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. If you want me to make other guides on how to do things, leave a like and a comment on what the next guide you want to know about. Until then, see you in the universe.